The reason why my career ended is because of neck injury. In life, sometimes things happen that you don't prepare for. October 30th, 2012, we were playing the Minnesota Vikings, and I was going to make a tackle, and I ran full speed into one of my own players head on. My neck snapped back, and for two minutes, I laid there on the ground, and I couldn't move. And the first thing I thought about is, am I gonna be able to walk forever? Because in life, we take things, we take things for granted. What's your name, boss? Alan? Alan, nice to meet you. So when high school's over, what's gonna be your plan? College? What college? Grand Canyon University, why did you pick that school? Because it's in his home state, because it's familiar. It's something familiar, it's something easy, it's in my comfort zone. But talking to coach, we're talking about basketball. Maybe this is my favorite shot and I'm shooting here, but I always shoot this shot. But what if I can't shoot this shot anymore? I gotta move somewhere else on the floor and I gotta make another basket from another place. What if all of a sudden, what if your sight went out? You can't see no more. You gonna give up and you gonna quit in life? The reason why I'm asking that question is because we have expectations in our minds of how it's gonna be. Every single one of us is gonna leave here today because we have plans. You guys got a short day, you're gonna be out of school in a minute. You got these plans, but all of a sudden, something unexpected is gonna happen. And the harsh reality is, it's not about what happens, it's not about who it happens to. The harsh reality, my man, is, is that what are you gonna do when it happens? You gotta fall back on something. And I'm looking at some of you guys right now and the thing that hurts me inside the most, the school that I was at yesterday and the school that I'm at today is that some of you guys don't even have any expectations for yourself. There's more people who have expectations for you than you have for yourself. What you got, man? Yeah? Here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Hold on, hold on, what's your name? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. So Corbin, why do you, why do you, uh, why do you know exactly where you want to go and the expectations and the plans that you have for yourself? Because I know things I'm good at and if they don't work, I have other things I can do. That's what I'm talking about. Everybody give Corbin a round of applause. Sit down, thank you. Thank you. Now listen, listen. It's only a joke. Here's the thing. You want to know, you want to know the thing about, I know about middle school and high school? is that everybody's laughing at the person who knows what they want to do. Everybody's laughing at the person who knows the plan. Ha <laughs> ha, that's funny. But watch, he's going to build the next thing that all y'all going to buy. Uh, they laughed at Steve Jobs. Oh, you a clown, you a fool. Everybody raise your hand if you got an Apple phone. OK, so now let me go back to the same point that I was just talking about. The reason why we laughed at that young man right there is because we feel some type of way about ourselves. We laughing at him like he's the joke, but we the joke. We still trying to figure out what we're going to eat uh, tonight for dinner. He already know where he's going to college. What's so funny about that? The same thing that 12, when I was in 12th grade, there was a girl who laughed at me when I stood up in the room and the teacher said, where do you guys see yourself in five years? I said, I'm going to USC and then I'm gonna graduate and I'm gonna play for the Miami Dolphins. Everybody giggle, just like y'all. Go ahead, giggle again. <laughs> Stop. Oh no, I'm not laughing because I'm just like him. I already know where I'm going. I said I was gonna wear number 51, drive a Mercedes Benz, play for the Miami Dolphins. Five years later, I put, got drafted to the Jacksonville Jaguars, which is 345 miles away from the Miami Dolphins. I said I was gonna wear 51, I wore 53. I said I was gonna make $222,000 when I was 18. I made $295,000. And the same people who laughed at me, the same people who were like, you ain't going to the NFL. You gonna, go, you gonna work at McDonald's, you gonna work at Burger King. The same people who said that, they wanted to be veterinarians, they wanted to be lawyers, they wanted to be doctors, they wanted to be all of these things. And I look on Facebook and I look at all social media and I see it and I'm like, ooh, I'm the only one that made it happen. So who's laughing now? The thing about your phone. But the thing about it is that every minute that we're on this thing, somebody else is making money. And they're not even doing nothing. The only thing that they're doing is they're sitting back. And they like my man right here talking about I'm going to Harvard and I'm going to do this. And this. when this doesn't happen, I'm going to have another plan. So before we look in somebody else's window and we start laughing at them, make sure we check our own mirror. The next point I want to make in understanding this, people will laugh at you, people will make fun of you, and people will try to make you feel insecure about yourself because of the things that they can't do. 
But the only thing a can't is, is two things. When you say can't or somebody else says you can't, they're saying they can't for themselves do what you do. And the same thing is when we say we can't do something is we're saying either we don't know how to do it or we don't want to do it. And if you don't want to do it, just say, I don't want to do it. I can't do this math problem. You're not saying you can't. Somebody else did it. So it's already proven that you can do it. I can't play basketball like that. I can't play sports like that. I can't look like that. I'm sick and tired of us saying that we can't do something. If another human being can do it, then we can do it too. Either I don't know how to do it or I don't want to do it. And both of those are cool. Be humble enough to ask. And the last thing I'm going to talk about, the very last thing I'm going to talk about, what's the most valuable thing that we have? What was it? Money. Money? That's what we value? If you, if you talk about money, you can spend it, you can invest it, you can waste it. But it doesn't matter anything about that money. You can always get it back. I can burn money. I can make another $100. But one thing that, they, that you can't make, you can't make and you can't make up is time and if you don't believe me go ahead and ask somebody who's older ask somebody like in their 60s 70s and 80s because there's two types of pain in this life the first type of pain is called sacrifice when the teacher or the coach says hey i'm gonna need you to stay after class for a couple of minutes because we're gonna have to go over this assignment i'm gonna need you to stay after practice for a couple of minutes because we're gonna need you to work on this jump shot or this football play or this soccer play or basketball play, whatever it is You're like dang i don't want to do it I don't want to do it. I don't want to get better. But here's the thing. In five years, 10 years from that moment, you're going to sit there and either be glad you did it or regret that you didn't. I worked my face off from the time I was 14 years old to the time I was 27, whether it was sports, whether it was academics. I was the first person in my family to graduate college. I was the first person in my family to play professional sports. I was the first person in my family to write a book to start a company. And the reason why I bring that up to you guys today is because when you work hard early in life, you get to relax and enjoy the rest of your life. So you can do two things. You can play around now and work your face off later for the rest of your life and it sucks. I see people all the time, I seen a lady who was probably 60 years old working in a gas station yesterday and I felt so sorry for her. I said, oh my gosh, she looked like she had a hard life. By hard life means she played a little bit too much early on. Or on the flip side of that, you can work hard, as hard as you can right now, as hard as the coaches are telling you to, as hard as the teachers are telling you to, go to class, it's for your own benefit. You can work hard. I'm just gonna do this for the next, till I'm 18, and then I'm gonna figure it out. Till I'm 25, whatever it is. And then you can play later. Because Here's the thing I know about life. Everything costs. Your decisions cost. Your choices cost. Your phone costs. Everything costs. Your life costs. You decide when you're going to pay. But everybody, everybody's going to pay. Hopefully you pay earlier so you can enjoy later. 